Origins Wing Commander series is more than just old school. This is shooting spitballs at Aristotle kind of old school. A series with its first title way back in 1990, years before its only real challenger in action fight sim, the X-Wing slash TIE Fighter series, launched its very first game. The original game shocked fans by combining things that, sure, other games were trying, into a single functioning package. There was no need for wireframe ships, real ones with a look that simulated 3D were on display. Your character, the newly graduated pilot, would go into battle alongside a wingman that you could command, against enemies that you could choose to taunt, and between missions, participated in a story that was shaped by your choices. If only Knights of the Fallen Empire could have tried something like that. Wing Commander's universe was heavily inspired by Larry Niven's known space, with your primary adversary being the feline humanoid Kilrathi, like Niven's Kazinti. The combination of intuitive controls, interesting story, and excellent gameplay made it a hit, and the following year saw Wing Commander 2, continuing the nameless protagonist, Blue Hair as he was codenamed by the studio, and his war against the Kilrathi after the destruction of his carrier from the first game. The follow-up was so successful that it began a franchise, such as Wing Commander Academy and Privateer, built on the systems that had made the first two games work. But three years later, it was time for the tech to move on with the times, which brings us to Wing Commander 3, Heart of the Tiger. In addition to upgrading to a new engine for combat, they decided to jump on the emerging bandwagon for full motion video, or FMV for short. This took off in the early 90s when video footage could be stored and looked more realistic than what the computer-generated graphics could look like, giving us things like the infamous Night Trap, the controversial Voyeur, and the groundbreaking The Seventh Guest. Wing Commander 3 took full advantage of this by making the game's shapeable story even more front and center here. It included a cast that would have Mark Hamill of Star Wars, Malcolm McDowell, John Rice davies Tim Curry, Tom Wilson of Back to the Future, and veteran character actor Jason Bernard as captain of the player's new ship, the Victory. Wing Commander 3 made its epic move with the courageous decision of being the final days of the war with the Kilrathi. The ambition with Wing Commander 3 was part of what drew many of these actors to the project. John Rice davies for instance, discusses the acting challenges that this presents. For instance, your decisions on one way lead to a confrontation that is verbal, and your decision another way leads to one that is physical. Now, both of those results can happen in the conversation, but it is the middle of the conversation. Now, it's just two scenes being performed, but as I said, there's more conversation after that. So the real challenge then is how you play the scene that immediately follows as an actor, because that scene must take both of those scenarios into account. It has to make logical sense if the player chose to talk to Paladin or to punch him in the face. You can see that this is something that is struggled with in some modern games, where a character speaks quietly in response to the player's action, and then immediately followed by a panicked high-energy rant because they didn't consider all of the leads into that bit of dialogue and just picked one. Malcolm McDowell was intrigued by the way they wanted to present the fantastical by using green screen technology and then rendering it digitally. He made the comparison to the other work that he was doing at the same time, Star Trek Generations, which built the sets, but it demanded a huge budget, while Wing Commander 3 was getting away with a $4 million budget for everything, including the game mechanics. It was the most expensive game up to that time, to be sure, but that was peanuts by Hollywood standards. Yet McDowell found the idea interesting to see in action, and accurately predicted that this kind of thing was going to become a staple of mainstream Hollywood in the future making Wing Commander cutting edge not only as a game, but also cinematically. Realizing the Kilrathi was not going to be so easy. With all of the use of green screen technology for the science fiction elements of the story, the Kilrathi demanded something more. They would need to be physically present to be in any way convincing. Hollywood special effects were required, using animatronics with pre-recorded algorithms to ensure that the heads would move in sync with the vocalizations and the expressions that the scenes would require. Now, they've received some criticism, but I think in part it's due to the way the scenes need to be lit. Generally, in this era, you'd want a bit of low light to help make the effects more credible, and that really, nothing short of a major studio picture could have really afforded better effects at the time. 
Low budget studios probably would have just gone with puppets rather than what they did. The game would prove to be a tremendous success and would ensure the arrival of two more games, Privateer 2 and Wing Commander 4, The Price of Freedom, which included many of the actors and characters from Wing Commander 3 in what has been hailed as probably the best game in the line. In addition, an animated series, Wing Commander Academy, set during the Kilrathi War, again had Hamill, Wilson, and McDowell reprising their roles as part of the USA Action Extreme team block. Yeah, it was the 90s. Huh? This block included other video game properties such as Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, along with comic properties like The Savage Dragon, and it's where Exo Squad, the animated show we've been looking at off and on, was found. The franchise drew to a halt quickly, though, as Chris Roberts moved on to form his own studio with his final involvement to be directing the terrible, terrible Wing Commander movie, which was mostly notable at the time for being a chance to see the Star Wars Episode One trailer. Origin did put out a Wing Commander 5 and a few small tie-ins, but the franchise was over before the film hit the screens, which obviously didn't do Wing Commander any favors. There was one game released by EA in 2007, but it was such a strong departure that many fans of the series feel it's just banking on the name. Really, the Wing Commander series effectively ended in 1998. This review is going to be a bit different. Rather than me doing a playthrough of the game, someone known as Queeg edited the FMV cutscenes and some of the combat together to make a Wing Commander 3 film. It was released onto the web and has spread, so I can't really trace it back to Mr. Queeg. But the point is that I'll be using this as the foundation of the review. Because of this and the way the game is shot so that it's not so much about you, the player, so much as about the tale of Christopher Blair as you help guide him through, this is going to be handled more like a film than it is a game. So with that, let's get down to the business with Wing Commander 3, The Heart of the Tiger. <laughs> 